When people say that sugar is non-addictive, I mean, they haven't seen patients at all. Because only when you have seen enough patients, you've seen a lot of them coming into your office, coming, consulting their physician, saying that they really have big problems quitting sugar. And sometimes we think that it's not completely addictive because there is not enough data, because there is not enough articles showing or clinical trials showing that sugar actually was addictive when they compared it versus placebo and a lot of things. But the truth is, when you go and see the centers in your body, in your brain, the hormones that the sugar actually can spike, can trigger when it is consumed in a high frequency or when it is consumed in a high dosage, then you start to understand that it's completely possible and then you have to go and see your patients. And when you talk to people, when you talk to your patients, they really are going to tell you that they're having really, really big problems quitting sugar. And quitting sugar, it's something very easy for some people. Like for instance, for me, quitting almost everything is very easy. I remember some years ago I used to smoke and when I quit smoke, it was super extremely easy. I just, just said, I'm not going to smoke ever again. I'm stopping right now and that was it. But for some people, this is not the path. In this video, I want to show you and I want to teach you what are the steps in which you can understand why sugar is so addictive and what can you do in order with the foods and with some strategies in order to really, really quit the addiction for sugar. So let's remember this. Sugar, it's a bond of two simple sugars or two simple carbohydrates called glucose and fructose. When you mix them, you have sugar or you have sucrose, which is exactly the same thing. It's a type of sugar in which you have the both substances bond together. Sugar, when you when it enters your body, you have some digestive enzymes. They're going to go into your system, into your, into your intestine, and what you produce in your pancreas and in your saliva, which is called amylase, it's going to break the sugars into the simple form. When you absorb glucose, glucose is going to your bloodstream because you need it for energy and the rest, what you're not using, you're going to store it in your liver and in your muscles because you might need energy for after when you're not eating and when you have consumed that energy that you already used in your cells. On the other hand, fructose, you're only going to use fructose a little bit for your gut microbiome, for all the bacteria that we have in, in the gut lining, but more than 90% is going to be absorbed. Fructose does not give us any energy at all. All the fructose is going to go to the liver. If it's a tiny amount of fructose, your liver can handle it and it's like, yeah, yeah, come on, let's go. I can process that. Some people say that, well, if I eat some sugar just once or maybe once a week, I'm going to be addicted to sugar. Maybe not. But if you're eating tons of sugar in different variety of foods, through a daily basis for many years or months, probably you're going to end up having an addiction for sugar. And this is something that really you are going to notice. Even if there is no clinical trial showing by itself that sugar is addictive. Again, I haven't seen a clinical trial showing by itself that the sugar is addictive. And after seeing thousands of patients, I've seen a lot of them, a lot, coming to my office saying that they really have a problem quitting sugar. When we are eating a lot of sugar, the problem is, again, we want to eat all the time because we have hormones making us crave for food and we have neurotransmitters that are going to be altered making us crave for food. What are those hormones? First of all, it's insulin. Insulin is produced in the pancreas to help us get the, the sugar or, or the glucose that we have in our blood into the cells. Insulin is very, very necessary for living, but high amounts of insulin when we eat a lot of carbs, when we eat a lot of sugar, when we eat a lot of starches, or when we eat a lot of times throughout the day, every single day, we're going to be spiking, spiking insulin. And the spike of insulin is dependent on the spike of glucose that we have in our bloodstream. Fructose doesn't spike insulin by itself. It's going to spike it because of the inflammation that it causes. When we have high amounts of insulin and when we have high amounts of carbs in our bloodstream, then we're going to start producing leptin. Leptin is going to be produced in the fat cell and leptin, the effect that it has is to make our brain stop eating. It's a appetite controlling, it's a hormone for appetite control, but it's going to make you stop. The problem is when you have high levels of insulin, then you're going to have, you might end up having insulin resistance, but you might end up having also leptin resistance. Then your brain, it's never going to understand that you're full. So when you go and see patients that are obese, 
and where they have a lot of uh, cravings for food and you measure leptin levels, it's going to be very high. And people used to think in the 90s, like, why are they high in leptin? It should be the contrary. We, we, we thought that it's called, it was going to be low. No, they started producing, but they became resistant for the effect of leptin. These two hormones are going to be high. And these two, one making you crave for more, and the other one supposed to be helping you not to crave, but being resistant for it, are going to have a very, very high effect for people to still be craving for that same thing that they keep on eating every single day and this is sugar. And now let's talk about the neurotransmitters that we have in our brain. The first one is dopamine. Dopamine has like two sides. It's like insulin. When we have good amounts of dopamine in our body, it's very good, it's very necessary. It's very good, for instance, for creating good habits in your body. But when you have large amounts of dopamine, dopamine stimulates and it's excitatory for, for your central nervous system, for your brain. When you continue on giving all the excitation from dopamine in your brain, this is going to create more reward of that thing you're consuming. It has been studied that the effect of dopamine when you get notifications in your cell phone, when you're advanced in an airline from silver, gold, diamond, triple diamond, all those prices that you're getting when you're playing a video game, everything from drugs, from sugar, from alcohol, from sex, from all the things that come, the stimulation of dopamine in your brain, and when you activate those reward centers all the time, you're gonna be looking for more and more. So, after all this, what are we going to do? Then we have to go, because quitting, quitting sugar is, it's not like quitting cigarette, it's not like quitting alcohol. It's difficult. It's exactly the same thing. What can you do to control those hormones? You need to have a diet very high in protein. High protein in your diet is going to control insulin. The second thing is you want to have good amount of healthy fats in your diet. Again, the same thing. When you have good amounts of healthy fats in your diet, then you're going to have control in the levels of insulin that you are producing. Number three, you want to have low levels of starches and for some time, absolutely nothing related to simple sugars. No sweets, no candies, no artificial sweeteners, or although they're not the same because they're non-caloric and they have no sugar or fructose at all, they might want to trigger you to have that same reward all the time. But please try to quit fruit juice, try to quit alcohol, sweets, candies, uh, or anything going for simple sugars for a while until you think you have control. And people might say, oh, May I have fruit at all? Yeah, of course you can have fruit. But try to go for a while for low glycemic index and low glycemic load fruits. Go for things like berries. Go for things like watermelon. Something that could be very helpful is don't get bored or see if you're bored that you're not eating for being bored. I remember when I used to smoke. I used to smoke more when I was bored when I was waiting for someone, when I was waiting for something, when I, it was, I don't know, Saturday, four o'clock, and I was in my house waiting for going to party at seven or at 8 p.m., and I was just sitting there and waiting for nothing. I used to smoke more. And the last thing that I wanna show you is try to have mindful eating. Sometimes we're eating in front of the cell phone or in front of the computer, and we're just, and just, eating and we have no clue on what we're doing. When you stop and you look at food, when you enjoy it, when you swallow, when you chew, when you chew every single bite that you have in your mouth, when you enjoy the flavors, when you have mindful eating and you're knowing what you're doing and you're in front of that plate, knowing what you're getting into your, into your body, then you can start controlling food. If you have it, please leave your comment here and tell us how these recommendations are helping you and also tell us if you had it before, how it helped you or what did you do or if you have any other strategies so people can read you and remember that your comments are very important for us because they can also tell us all the things that you wanna know for future videos. And before we leave, remember that there's a very easy way to help us. We have over 2.5 million followers in our, in our Spanish channel and we are growing this community and we thank you for seeing these videos. But the very easiest way to help us is just to share the video with your friends. Hit the like button here, click down here in the red button to subscribe and hit the bell.
So every time that we make a new video, you're going to be the first one to be notified. Thank you and till next time.